Hey gang, Jack Lair here, and I'm gonna be doing a, kind of a diary of The Last of Us. I've uh, got it and I'm playing through it. I just played through the intro and... Fuck. I mean, you... It's a zombie game, and it's, a, it's an infected game. And you know it's gonna be dark. And I've even... I know a little bit about what's going on in it, but it's, the opening is just... I mean, it makes the, a lot of the Romero things look a little blah, just because it opens so strong. And the characters are outlined really beautifully, and the, but let's just say that the, the main character, his daughter and his brother, are all believable characters. Well, the brother we don't really get to know much, but the father and the daughter we get to we get to meet in uh, real depth. I mean, for the brief, as brief as it is, and as brief as you know most uh, openings to movies are, this is a good, good, solid opening. I mean, they they lay down a lot of how this game is going to go at least the way I think this game is going to go in a very short amount of time. So this is after just watching the intro. So I'll go ahead and check back in after I've made it through uh, some of the seasons and just see where we are. Hey gang, Jekyll Air back and I have just completed summer and have just started into fall for The Last of Us. Now. A whole lot happened in summer. I thought it was going to be broken down. Each season was going to be about a fourth of the game. Uh, minor spoilers, there are four seasons in the game. Um, summer introduces us to Tess, who is a badass. She is actually uh, more of a badass than Joel in a lot of ways. And then again, she's also younger, or seems to be, probably by about 10, 15 years. All the ages are kind of nebulous, but if we're assuming Joel had uh, about a teenage daughter in the opening, then we can guess that he was about 30, 35, somewhere in that. Um, and now he's probably pushing 40 or 50. Um, so Tess is younger than him, and you pick up Ellie, who you've seen any of the gameplay footage, you've probably seen Ellie. And it's it's amazing how that progression goes through because you get a lot of story given to you without anything actually being said. It's a lot of undertones. And those are things that a lot of games don't do well is that they beat you over the head with, hey, this is a bad person, this is a bad person, this is a bad... And in this, it's, it's very much a gray area. These people are all trying to survive, and they're all doing it at a certain level of just fucked up. And while they may be on the lighter side of fucked up, they're still fucked up. Seriously. Um, so we also uh, get introduced to the Hunters, which are kind of uh, huge jerks. They set traps and they kill people and steal all their stuff. Um, and by the way, a nice touch. The So let me take a step back. In this section, we get introduced to a lot of the gameplay and a lot of the combat. And the combat is very impressive, but I do understand now the criticisms of some people saying, okay, well, I snuck through this entire level. I got to the end, and then realized I had to kill people. And the other thing is that I killed everybody that I could find, and then I walked out, and then three more guys showed up from somewhere. I don't know where, I don't know who saw me, I don't know where they came from, but I had like scoured the coffee shop and the little bank across the way, anyways. And then you get introduced to, oh, just based on their names, I think it's, so we get introduced to Sam and Henry. I kept thinking Sam and Max, and I knew that I was like, that's not right. That's a, that's an adventure game. 
And you get introduced to them and they're fellow survivors and they're just trying to trying to get out of the city. And things go kind of bad and kind of good and they're it's then that you realize that even the nice people still want to survive. And it's this introduces a lot of different combat uh, scenarios. You learn how you I mean some are you learn a lion share of the game. So you pick up the bow, which is uh, actually fairly useful once you figure out how to use it, which it took me a little while. Um, the other things that you learn are you get Molotov cocktails, you get uh, smoke bombs, you get nail bombs. Oh, I completely forgot to talk about. Oh, I should blank on his name. Mark? No, Mark. Ah! See, I. I, I played like way late into the into the night, but there is you run into characters that are just amazing and they're portrayed they're real human beings in that they're jerks but they're nice jerks or they're you know they're kind of douchey people but they're trying to do the right thing. It's it's very inventive and I love the world and I love the the progression of how you go from uh, a human being to an infected to uh, a clicker to a bloater and I'm sure there's going to be something after that but it's just weird and I mean I love that they've actually thought this through so that that way when you're playing the game you see like you start to see the spores and then Joel puts on his gas mask and uh, it goes a little farther and you start seeing like the spores actually forming up on the walls and you know you're like oh crap things are about to go bad here bad and this is also where at the very end of summer you get introduced to the story of Ish which is all told through little notes being left around of different things going on and what happened and it's actually a really great story, and I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they would fill it in. Uh, I'm also collecting the comic books for Ellie, and one of the things that I would really like to see is, I would like to see some of the other things that they've designed in this world kind of fleshed out, just to, like a collector's edition down the road, and say, hey, you know what? What we're gonna do is we, we made this stupid, 15 minute, or not even 15 minute, like a, like a three minute trailer for your Dawn of the Wolf Part 2, which is obviously a, a, a Twilight ripoff, and it's fine that it's a Twilight ripoff. Uh, there are also little posters around the game, and it's a lot of the interactions which are really starting to sink in and make it look really amazing, such as when there's a dartboard, uh, at a certain point they'll sit and play darts while they're waiting for the grown-ups, the kids will play the darts while they're waiting for the grown-ups to do grown-up things and search and... But they also talk about uh, Harley Davidson's and how all these things existed beforehand and uh, Ellie, who is uh, 14, so she was born six years after the outbreak, has no clue of a lot of these things. And some she does, some she doesn't. And it's also fun seeing the slow transition of Ellie from this kind of loud-mouthed, uh, yappy girl that's kind of like, yeah, I'm super tough and da-da-da. And then to see her slowly coming over to Joel's side where she starts becoming a badass in her own right. There was, uh, there's one scene where I don't know if it was scripted or if it was just that I was not doing that well, but she knifed the shit out of somebody and just stared and she it just it's going through the slow progression where she is learning what it takes to survive in this world as a grown-up as an adult outside of the the quarantine safety zone but on the other hand you're also seeing Joel who started out very very gruff and very F the world and in the intro you see why and he is slowly starting to warm up to where he starts out, you know, talking to her about the first time she's killed a man and she shot him. And spoilers. It, you know there are spoilers here. But, and 
he starts to warm up to her and he starts giving her a little bit more encouragement and talking to her and saying, hey, you know, that was a good job you did it there. Good looking out. Hey, here, here's this thing. So it's really cool, and uh, we've progressed through summer, which uh, I believe it says I'm now 61% done with the game. So the next two seasons, uh, fall, well, three seasons, fall, winter, and summer, or fall, winter, and spring, the next few seasons, um, fall, and then winter, and then spring, should be fairly short. Uh, we're currently on our way to see uh, Joel's brother that you saw in the in the intro and we'll go visit him see what's up all right i'll be back after fall all right gang so fall is no more uh we just went through fall and pretty pretty amazing uh we got to be reunited with uh joel's brother tommy uh, and kind of learn a little bit of what happened there as far as fallout goes. Turns out uh, it's kind of a shorter season. Uh, it mainly takes place in two main areas. Uh, one part is at a hydroelectric power plant and the other is at a university. And this is the turning point to where Joel actually realizes that he's going to keep Ellie around. And that he, I mean, they have a huge fight and they yell and scream at each other. And then they get to where the fireflies are supposed to be and they're not there. So it's very much a, oh shit. Oh no, what's going on? And then Joel is dying when the it fades to black and brings up winter. So we're going to see how that plays out here in a little bit. Because uh, I'm going to keep trucking. We've got winter and spring left to go. Let's see how it all plays out. Uh, this, this was more of a character development season. And not as heavy on combat, which I did like. Uh, because it was very much... Uh, it goes back and forth. And the cool thing is, is that it gave the chance to actually delve into Joel and Ellie's character, and especially when uh, you learn that Ellie has found out about Sarah, and it's heartbreaking because she tells Joel, she's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not Sarah. And he finally says, you're not. A huge fight. But, yeah. And it kind of goes around. They do introduce, uh, they're actually, uh, the, the trope of voice recorders starts showing up now. Before now, it's all been written, pen and paper, which kind of made sense. And it was kind of cool because it was all on scraps of paper and there was stuff misspelled and all kinds of craziness. But uh, now we get the voice recorders, and there are a few where it's uh, playing through it. The funny thing is that normally they'll have, you'll have the voice recorders, and you'll have this rambling, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I love it. There's a part where Joel is listening to it, and he's like, ah, blah, whatever, blah, fast forward. And he's like, and then we, this is all for naught, and like, oh. Ah, and he just keeps fast forwarding until he gets the, to the piece of information that he wants to know. But it's it's kind of hysterical. And it's a nice change from the wall of blah, 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 plot that, that Joel really doesn't care about. I also love the fact that there's a... Joel picks up a, probably an important piece of information but it's all in medical jargon, so he's just like, uh, he picks it up and he like looks at it, and he's like, I didn't find anything to choose. Like, uh, it's all medical crap. And I don't know. This was a, a lot of a lot of banter, a lot of banter back and forth between uh, Ellie and Joel, and it's a lot of good good banter because they're like, what did you want to do when you grow up? And, and learned out learned that Ellie wants to be an astronaut, and Joel wanted to be a singer. 
So she's pressuring him to sing, which is funny because she's been singing the whole time and trying to whistle and doing all kinds of musical stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, over the next two seasons if we actually do get Joel to sing, because that'll be fairly impressive. But I'm going to go back and uh, start playing Winter, and we'll go from there. Alright, so I just finished Winter, and wow, you start off playing Ellie. So, yeah, and she goes, she's hunting food, and she kills a rabbit, and then she goes chasing a deer. She ends up killing the deer and ends up running into uh, David, who is another character that's being introduced in this chapter. And he is the leader of a community, and they have a town, and they are kind of... They meet over the deer, and then she says, well, you can have the deer if you bring me some penicillin. And so David sends his flunky off to go bring penicillin back, and in the meantime, they get attacked by infected. And you kill a couple hundred of them to include a bloater, which you do fairly easily. And then... You kind of go your separate ways. But David also drops the bomb on you that some of his group that was sent out hunting, foraging in the city, he calls it, did not come back and were killed by an old man traveling with a little girl. Yeah, none other than our heroes. But he lets her go and then follows her, of course, as she gives the penicillin to Joel. We find out he is alive. And then it goes from there, let's see, Ellie decides to try and lead them away, does a very good job, almost makes it back, gets caught by David. At this point, Ellie wakes up in a cage and is just a... Ellie towards David and you find out that they're all cannibals, and that they're cutting up human beings and eating them. Anyways. And then it goes on to where uh, Joel wakes up and Joel is going to find Ellie. Ellie is trying to escape all at the same time. And it's kind of a back and forth um, to try and figure out who's going to do what. And then it ends in the first thing that I would call a boss fight. I mean, there was the first bloater that we ran into that I was sorely unprepared for. But then once I learned that you just throw a Molotov or two on them and they're gone. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty, pretty interesting. You had to uh, not walk on crashed plates and stab David three times. The first time is just kind of, ah, stabby. Second time, a little more challenging. The third time, he's actually stealthing around just like you are. So you have to wait for him to move and then figure out where he is and then get a line of sight on it. Follow him around for a while, then put the stabs on him. And then that big big fight happens. Joel is ringing out with Ellie. Uh, Ellie does something truly amazing, which I'll leave alone there. And we continue into spring, which I'm gonna go start now. Hey gang, so I have finished spring of Last of Us, the last of the seasons, and you finally make it to the end goal of where you've been trying to get this whole time, and the whole reason that you've been on this crazy mission is to escort Ellie. And you finally get her there, and the first thing that happens is you get to see giraffes, which is really awesome because she was, Ellie was starting to feel down, and just kind of depressed because I guess the, the the road trip was almost over and it was going to be ending soon. And it seems like Ellie knew a little bit more than Joel did because Joel didn't know that to get the cure or whatever they were going to have to dig into Ellie's brain thus killing her. Joel of course having none of this uh, decides to wipe out a small army uh, stab a surgeon in the throat with a scalpel and then shoot his employer 
and then drive off. Uh, a lot of the really cool stuff here happens after that because you get you try and decide whether Joel was lying to Ellie or not because they're not really they're not really very clear about it because yes it does say that there have been others yes it says that they've been trying this before yes they've failed before but with Ellie I think there's they're going to have a good chance or at least that's what I got from the little audio recordings that I picked up but in the end uh, Joel just decides that he would rather live life with Ellie than without cure or no cure and drives off with her and takes her back to the the town that he was invited to stay at with his brother so it turns out to be a, a real happy ending it does get a really crazy towards the end and because everybody gets automatic weapons which before that when you charged at people, if they had like a shotgun or a revolver, they would shoot it. And then while they're cocking it again, you would have time to run up and punch them. Not so with a fully automatic weapon, because they're just digging it and you're just going, eh, 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 and you can't run up and get them. Uh, but overall, amazing, amazing game. Um, I could never see this being done as a movie. It is far too violent unless you went someplace like Hong Kong cinema. And then it would turn out amazing in my opinion. But I don't I don't see that happening. I did like the little nods along the way. Uh, there are some the all the band names are cute and there's a board game of Jack and Dexter and a board game of Uncharted in the world. It's just nice the little touches that are in there. I don't know if I got everything, I don't know if I found all the audio whatevers or the comic books, but uh, I don't really care. I was just having fun. And so that's it. Uh, it took me about, I don't know how long it took. All right, so there you can see for me, it took me uh, 16 hours, 39 minutes. So there you go, Last of Us, uh, kind of a weird video diary while I'm playing it. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on.